And like at the end of the interview, she goes, you always have, you will always have my team's number because my team is not going to change. So when you feel like you're ready to direct one for me, call me. So like this year, I'm fucking calling Alicia. You're like, I'm ready now. <laughs> hey, do you remember me? Hello everyone. Welcome, I'm Brianna. And with me today, I have director JMP and who has worked with several artists like Alicia Keys, XXXTentacion, Noah Cyrus, Playboy Cardi. And today on 24 seven drips, staying at home, we will be talking about James. Welcome. So Thanks for me, having me. <laughs> we're happy to have you. Um, yeah. So tell me, how has the pandemic been for you? How are you dealing with things? Um. It's been, uh, obviously, it's been a change of pace. I feel like everyone had to just make a shift. Um, but uh, initially, it was a scare. Everyone was at home. I went to Whole Foods and bought a freezer and <laughs> filled it with a bunch of stuff. Like, I had no idea to what extent this was going to yeah. go to. And I was living in L.A. Um, okay. at the time. But, um, you know, it's shaped up to be, you know, uh, for me personally, obviously, like a blessing in disguise um, for for just like focusing on myself. Obviously, like, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are going through some serious struggles and it's like, it's just not a good time for the world, but it did allow a lot of people to just check themselves and like focus on maybe like what the important things are. So yeah, I really got to just buckle down and really take some time to like think about, you know, where I wanna go and the goals I wanna achieve and the people I have around me and just like where I'm spending all my time. So. Um, there's been a lot of like positive and negatives to this whole really pandemic. Um, but in general, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself and I've made some pretty, um, interesting transitions just in like the past six months. And, uh, I'm, it's, yeah, it's just getting me excited for the future. What are some of those transitions? If you don't mind me asking. And like, what do you, I think we focus so much on the negatives of what pa the pandemic has brought us because obviously right. there's so many, but like, what yeah. are maybe some positives that you feel have come out, especially like for you as an artist or like a creator, like that you feel like, Oh, actually this is making me stronger and better. Yeah. I mean, um, like I said, the first month or two, it was a little nerve wracking, but then once I realized like, this is a time where, you know, most people are at home, people aren't working at full capacity and it's kind of like a resting period for a lot of people. <clears throat> but, um, you know, as a freelance person um, who like, you know, is pretty much supporting my own self with my own work yeah. and having to go out and kind of just grind, you can't really just stop, yeah. you know? Um, and I've, cause I, any money that I've ever made, I've been reinvesting it into myself and my businesses right. So I, I wasn't really in a position to just be sitting and kind of just wasting money. So I was just thinking of ways that I could reinvest my time, my energy and my savings into stuff that I feel like would set me up for the future. But um, I think some of the positives I got out of it were, um, you know, I, I had the time to open a new business and I, I opened a, a photo like a film lab in L.A. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah. And I have two business partners and right before the pandemic, it was kind of just like, you know, maybe this is a good opportunity to, to do this because we can actually like buckle down, yeah. take a few months to work on everything, making sure it's proper and then open, hopefully when the pandemic starts to, yeah. you know, simmer down. But obviously yeah. <laughs> it's kind of just going in crazy waves. So we've been kind of just operating like as safely as possible during the pandemic. And then luckily it's like a, you know, it's just a drop off service where we just take yeah. care of your film. And um, yeah, it's been a called? So it's, the, the store is called Last Good Film Lab, Last and Good. it's like a 35 millimeter, 120 film, color, black and white, positive. Like we do okay. motion picture film now. So like we, oh. we've been, yeah, we just want it to be like a one stop shop for like creatives. We're based in the center, like literally center of Hollywood. And um, it's it's been like a really big challenge, but it's been super rewarding. You know, I've been able to put a lot of like faces to names that I never got to really see. I just see people on Instagram and see their work and then they were dropping their stuff off and I'm getting to like talk to them about their <laughs> projects before they're happening. So it's like it was just like a really cool um, way for me to like just change my perspective on things. And um, we're, yeah, we're about to open another one in Miami um, okay. and then a third one elsewhere, which I don't really even feel comfortable talking about because it's still okay. in the works but it's, it's too like new. it's too new it's fair <laughs> no but it, it's cool I, I i like to just basically like you know not talk about something fully until i feel like i have a really strong hold on it 
Okay. And I know it's like definitely going to happen because sometimes that'll just mess up plans. And I think right. that's just the way the world works, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it, like that happened. What is it? The things like, don't like be too busy, like making plans because life will like make a plan for you. <laughs> exactly. And that's kind of like, that's kind of what happened. You know, I didn't yeah. plan on doing like a whole bunch of crazy things, but here I am. I'm actually in Miami now. I've okay. fully moved my life to Miami, uh, right. moving into my lease and shipping my car over. Um, and I'm just focusing on opening the lab here and, um, you know, just trying to take my talents to the East Coast again, you know, because okay. I was, I, I was, I was You're stuck Boston, in, right? I, no, I mean, I was, I grew up in Boston. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then I've been living, <laughs> you know, I lived in New York for four or five years and then uh, past four or five years, I was in LA. So, um, I don't know. I guess it's a trend I'm following now. So you're four like or five used years. to bopping around. You're like, you're like all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I also feel like I get bored quick. I don't know if you guys can relate, but it's like, sometimes Definitely. you have your room set up a certain way and you're just like, nah, I need to move my bed over there. I got to put my desk there. Like sometimes <laughs> you just need an, oh yeah. You just need to switch yeah. it up and change the feng shui just so you can kind of just be re-inspired. And that's kind of just where I'm at. And that's what the, the pandemic's okay. pretty much done for me. Yeah. I know that you're you're like talking about like uh, how you get through those roadblocks or like life changes um, for yeah. yourself. But like other than that, like especially when you're like coming towards a deadline, do you is there anything that you feel like that you do that helps get that writer's block out of your head? Because I know that like when the deadline's coming up, sometimes my brain just goes like even more clear than focused. Or do you get yeah, really focused? I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think I think pressure makes diamonds. So that's Definitely. that's kind of where I've always been at. And it's like I've always I've always been someone that like when the pressure's on and there's a deadline to be made, like as scatterbrained as it might seem, <laughs> like that's usually when some of the coolest stuff comes into play. Yeah. And like So you're not stressed out. You're like cool, calm and collected. This is this is the way Um I wouldn't say I'm not stressed out. I I will have situations okay. where like if it's delivery day, delivery day, I'm stressing out the whole time. Yeah. But like the people around me are like you got this. Like it's all yeah. good. Like look how, you know what I mean? Like making me realize that like I'm I'm overstressing because I have a certain standard for myself. Right. And right. it's not always the client that expects a certain expectation. It's just me. You, um, I put the pressure on yeah, myself. Because um, <laughs> at the end of the day, a lot of clients, like, I could have, you know, I could have sent them a rough draft, no color, and they probably yeah. wouldn't have even noticed. Some people just don't have the understanding of, like, you know, when you're in a certain lane, you know, yeah. like, if you're, if you're not a musician and you hear a song, you might not hear the difference between a rough song, a finished song, a fully mixed song, right. and an, a mastered song, you know? There's mm -hmm. levels to um, the taste of that genre or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, being in the film world, you know, as I've been growing over the past 10 years, you realize all the pieces that go into the bigger picture. So, like, once you understand those elements, you start to get the pressure of those elements. You know what I mean? You expect more from yourself. Yeah, and I expect yeah. for those things to be done, especially after doing them for a certain amount of time. It's like, you know, you can't skip out on a color correction. That's what really ties the right, picture right. together and things, you know, Definitely. so. Sets the tone. You know, yeah, it sets the tone. So it's like, there's so many elements that do that. But um, once yeah. you kind of have an understanding of like the fact that, you know, you're kind of just in competition with yourself yeah. always. Um, once you understand that and you don't let it get to yourself to it like intensely, mm -hmm. you know, it usually ends up, you know, e becoming a lot easier to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like you seem to be like a pretty much a go getter on every single level. Um, you <clears throat> definitely have found like a home and a niche within the music and video community. Do you ever mm -hmm. feel like you want to like transition over into more like narrative work in terms of like making a film or a TV show or anything like that? Because I'm watching your music videos. There are beautiful stories being told. So like, what do you think about that? Is that like a yay or an A? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so it's like, it's, an, it's another aspect of like those elements. And for me, music videos have always been like, um, the accessible community that I had for me to be able to tell these stories on a, on a large enough scale. Right. So like that, I'm not, you know, just making work and 200 people are seeing something that I put tons of hard work into. Right. And initially like, that's where it was and it's frustrating and you don't want to like, you know, tell a story unless people like are going to see it kind of, but yeah. you got to go past that because good stories will always be like 
told and people will always connect with the real story. So like once I realized, you know, like telling narratives and stuff, that was like my passion. It really just got to the point where it was just like, you know, I'm going to take this community that supports me and I'm going to run it up. I'm going to get to the point where like I can learn as much as I can in this music video world. So that when I do take a step in a narrative and shoot 120 minutes and throw it on the silver screen, like I'm ready for that. And it's something that I really love. And I want my first narrative or film uh, or feature to be something that's super powerful. Um, okay, so like it's it's like it's happening. It's like, imminent. Yeah, okay. it's imminent. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna happen for sure. Like that's All something right. that like I have plans to do and it's just it's just a matter of timing and you know finding the right script or the right idea that i really like just want to sink my teeth into and and okay. just and just feel right about you know but it's well, it's coming I but i'm just not like, sure okay. when we i mean i was like oh he has to make something like i'm watching these music videos i'm like he has to be making something <laughs> like soon just... one day one day there's just uh, there's some other things that i really want to um like hammer down because as okay. much as like making a movie is like a visual thing i yeah. realized the production side of it is so important yeah. and okay. that's that's kind of where i'm trying to put my focus this year is not not directing but actually like executive producing and oh, okay yeah and just like helping projects come together and just like just seeing the like the intensity of that because like you know hopefully one day if i do do a movie it's like yeah. I would love to even self-fund my own movie. Like, okay. I don't I don't want anyone telling me what to do or how to do it or where it's going to go. Like, I want control of that. And okay, I don't so need, like, I don't think. Production yeah. company. Let's, like, throw that up. Like, you want to make a production company to make Yeah, well, then? it's happening. So, like. It's happening? The, okay. Yeah, so the reason why I moved to Miami, um, and this happened, like, really quickly. I had a production company already. It was literally just, like, my own. It wasn't, like. It was a it was a place where I could run my visuals through, yeah. you know, and it was called JMP Visuals, and that play that that will never change. But yeah. at the end of the day, um, you know, I came out to Miami because I got offered basically a partnership to start a new production company um, with the power and backing of Rolling Loud. Um, so, wow. yeah, and it's super okay, exciting. That's cool. Congratulations! I, <laughs> thank you. And like, I, I didn't expect it. I literally came out here for like a, a Twitch stream just to see some friends. And, um, you know, Matt had reached out to me to like have a, like a, just a sit down meeting. And he's one of the co-founders of Rolling Loud. And I've gotten close with a lot of the guys that are affiliated there just over the years through X and being, being, being someone that comes to Florida all the time and does a lot of work and Gabe and Ronnie and Ski and like these are all guys that I've just built relationships with over time and so Matt was kind of just like man I think you'd be a good fit here everyone knows your family your family for us and like you know we welcome you with open arms if this is something that you want to do so like I'm here it's happening and everything they've said has been exactly what they said it was so it's you know this year is gonna be really exciting and um, I'm, I'm just excited to have like a platform that's going to have a little bit more support than just my own stuff, you know, that's and I'm going to, yeah, a team. And I, now I get to empower a lot of like younger creatives and like I'm reaching out to some of the younger directors that I've been seeing put in work. And like, I just want to give them the bigger budgets and put them on a platform yeah. where they have a real team to like, just do it. And like have me just be someone that can help guide them to that finish line, like for anything, you know, and a lot of these guys, like, are very self-capable directors that can build their own teams and do that. But, you know, even in a position that I'm in where it's like, you know, I might be doing a lot of big videos with big artists, but like having a team and like a support system and a rollout, like that stuff is invaluable. It really is. And like um, Rolling Loud has obviously proved to be like one of the biggest festivals in the world yeah. for the genre that you know i put myself into so like yeah, yeah. i'm just super grateful for that partnership like the, you know it was just like a melding of like minds and like being yes. on the same level with everyone that's awesome congratulations for any upcoming directors and creatives um when they're maybe coming up towards success like how do you stay so like not even humble i don't know if that's the right word but just like level-headed and like not letting you know maybe the darker sides of the industry get to you um you know i think you just got to think about like do you want to have a future and it's like if you think you can walk around and act like you already made it at any point in your life just look at some of the people who have like done 
way bigger things than you and just humble yourself. Cause it's like, unless you're really trying to cap your own career and be like, I made it, this is my end all be all. Then like, you, you do have to like, it's part of the game. You have to humble yourself. You have to have people around you that are going to check you. And luckily I've had people around me that have like are constantly leveling, leveling up on me and like always like, setting the standard for like what the next thing is and just pushing each other so it's like you know when you have people like that around it's good friendly competition and that alone is humbling you know what I mean because it's not like you're the only person surrounded by a bunch of and I love this word I love saying sycophants just people who don't have your best (laughs) interest but like people that will just be like yes 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 that's all you like those are not the progressive people you want to be around you know I feel like in a lot of ways it's like keeping you from greater success because it's yeah, in your, like downfalls and your failures and you're like, eh, exactly. That's where you grow. That's where you really grow. Exactly. So it's like, you know, like you just always have to have a mindset for like being the biggest and the best. But by doing that, it's by setting the standard that like you can be at the top of your game and you, you still have a lot to learn, you know, and like a perfect example, like last year we did a video with Pitbull. And he's the, like, probably the most professional, humble, like, artist I've ever worked with. And that's, like, from, I mean, like, I was and little listening Worldwide, to Pitbull. So, he's like, Mr. Worldwide, yeah, Mr. 305, guy. Mr. International yes. Man. Yes. And, like, that type of artist, like, was, like, you know, intimidating at first. But he's yeah. like, no, call me Armando. Like, he's like, <laughs> you know, he, he treats you like uh, an equal, like, like, yeah. like. And that's that alone, like, made me realize, like, man, if someone from like Pitbull, yeah. who we only have an hour with on set, can come to set and make yeah. everyone feel super comfortable, no rush, like, it was like, it was like, man, that's an eye opening experience. Everyone here is humbled by that. And it's like, yeah. you move forward from that production being like, well, I, I have a lot to do, you know? Yeah. You're, so, you saw growth in yourself that you wanted from that experience. Yeah, because like, you know, even someone who's not doing the same thing that I'm doing, it's like, you know, they've reached a certain like point of their life and certain like accolades that like if they can walk around and make a random person on set feel like we're all just family. (laughs) Yeah, man. It's like, "Ah." and then also like that feels good. Like you want to be that person. Like you want to be inspiring to others. Of course. And he and like he's just an inspiring individual you know so like it made me want to be more like that you know like super mom she really is i was able to like watch her i'm originally i'm from santa barbara i don't know if you know where that's from yeah um i'm originally from there and so she's like performed a couple of times at the santa barbara bowl and like i've seen her live and she is a powerhouse like she is amazing amazing and honestly like like at that interview, like, I was like, man, I would love to direct a video for Alicia Keys. Yeah. But at that point in my career, I just wasn't there. Like, I didn't have right. the, the ability to deliver, like, the quality or, like, the stature that she would, yeah. that she needs. <laughs> interview, she goes, you always have, you will always have my team's number because my team is not going to change. So when you feel like you're ready to direct one for me, call me. Dang, and like, do we see an Alicia Keys video coming up from you? <laughs> so like this year, I'm f- calling Alicia. You're like, I'm ready now. <laughs> hey, do you remember me? We had yeah. pizza and interview. I don't you even know. Me, she- you made me try truffle <laughs> the first time. This is a real yeah. celebrity fire artist, like, and just a <laughs> great mom and human yeah. being and woman, like. Oh. oh, that's awesome. So um, we talked a lot about like what inspires you and like one of the places that you mentioned that you lived in was Boston and like the East Coast. How do you feel like that affects you? Because I know that we're way different on the West Coast. You like lived in LA and you lived in Boston. So like how has that inspiration from Boston affected you? Yeah, well, I grew up in Boston um, and that was kind of where like I first got my, I was an audio engineer first. So I was like in the studio, like cutting up people's songs and then I got a camera and realized like I could leave the studio and create from there so you know that was an inspiring place just in general to get that whole new tool to do something completely different than I thought I was going to do but it definitely I think Boston is really the place that like helped me curate my style which is kind of like for certain songs like I I have certain things that like are I, I don't know like um not attributed to me, but like, like people see my videos and they notice it's a JMP video based on the way of my camera movement. And that was, that was like me in Boston, not getting big budgets. I had no resources. 
Um, I don't even think I had a car at that time. So I couldn't even drive out somewhere. And it was really just like, how can we make these things look cool? So it was like really just like a camera movement thing. And it was energy with the artist. And like, once I realized, like, I didn't need a dollar to make so, make a good video. Like you just, it's really about how you capture someone. Like that's what really just stuck with me. So like, I've always been someone that loves operating the camera and just capturing that vibe of whoever the talent is through camera movement. So yeah. Yeah, I would say Boston is definitely like the place that I came up at and all the people around me helped me just like figure that out, you know? I feel like Boston is like high energy. So like- It's super high energy, energy and it, I don't think it's, yeah, and I don't even think it's gotten the, the light that it's supposed to. And there's so many talented people from Boston. And I feel like in the next few years, once I get a little bit more of my life together, I'm planning on going back and like just going ham and trying to give back to the city. Like- yeah. Once, once I'm in that pos position of power, you know, where I can actually like give nice back to the circle moment. <laughs> yeah. And that's the goal. You know, I want to go back where it started and kind of just like give back to the, the people that gave me the, the power to do what I need to do. You had the opportunity to go to the Grammys with Nas X. How was that experience? Like that is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I feel so for so many people, it's for the sure. Grammys. So how was that for you, especially coming up? You said as a sound engineer, like what was that kind of experience? I mean, it was an honor. Uh, I was super excited to even get asked to be like invited to go and walk on the red carpet and all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, like Lil Nas is such an inspiring, like young, really? talented artist that has already broken so many boundaries. So like to be able to go to the Grammys with him and like just capture him getting those, you know, awards and recognition for what he's already done. It's just like a super genuine moment that a lot of people like, you know, it's invaluable and it's like something that I will never forget. And I, I will always appreciate Nas for having me follow him through this experience and like meeting so many incredible people like Billy Ray and Nas Nas. Like he's he's doing all these insane big things. And, you know, he's just like such a genuine person, just like Pitbull is like you walk into a room and he makes you feel like you know, you have the opportunity to meet him and like get to know him. And like, you know, it's not so I'm here, you're over there, you know? Yeah. And that's like for someone as young as him with like the amount of stuff that he's already done and where he's at, it's like, that's like really refreshing. So like, um, yeah, I'm just super grateful. And like going to the Grammys was like, you know, it's something that you only just watch on the TV, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like, wow, I'm here. I'm walking down the hallway, bumping into everyone. I got <laughs> to like see, see a bunch of people I haven't seen in a long time. And um, it was just great. It was like something that I just will never forget ever. Awesome. Yeah. He, he's, he's such an incredible artist. And like you mentioned Billy Ray, and I know that you also like got to work with Noah Cyrus and um, that video, I got so high, I saw Jesus is beautiful um thank I, you i just recently went to tennessee and like i don't even think i can't even explain that video i feel like captured the beauty of tennessee in a way that like i haven't like seen in a lot of imagery yeah i mean noah like when she played us that song it was like this needs yeah. to be all natural yeah like this needs to be just raw I so really like we love the stripped down version like it was just her like and i love yeah it like not over styled it was mm. just like inner jeans like riding a mm -hmm. horse bareback yes. it was just like <laughs> her connecting with their roots and like ever since i started working with noah that was always a focus of mine as a creative on a team was just like let's focus on your roots and where yeah. people really want to see noah you know because like mm -hmm. everyone knows the cyrus family and like they're yeah. just like you know like through music they're legends Iconic. you know yeah. all the way back to, you know like dolly parton like this is just like a mm -hmm. legendary family yes definitely. so like you know when you have definitely dolly vibes definitely dolly vibes even though right, she is but, like but like her, yeah. she is so sweet and genuine uh, i don't know her but <laughs> she seems so sweet and genuine but that's what i'm saying it's like and we've gotten to know this family over the yeah. years and like yes. we have an expectation of them and it's like i felt like her going back to her roots was kind of breaking the expectation of noah having to be this like super pop star that's like mm -hmm. doing all this extra shit yeah. when you really like can just deliver the raw stuff that everyone can really connect with yeah. and, and um the same and and like you said you have like sort of a style and and that was like also similar to like july like i know you did july as well and those two i like i think they're like sister videos almost like they yeah 
they're awesome <laughs> thank you so much i mean yeah. now i feel like i've moved away from like the crazy yeah. like sporadic like camera movement because mm -hmm. like when i have the ability to do something just pretty cinematic beautiful clean cuts no effects that's really become i feel like what i want my style to be i want my style like my, i want my stuff to be just timeless that's the goal yeah. you know i want someone I to watch that, that in 20 i want someone to watch that video in 25 30 years and be like wow you know and not and not feel like it's dated you know yeah. I definitely had that one moment for me. I don't know. Well, that, you, that's, that's, all it, that's, yeah, that's all I could ask for. That's all I could ask for. Awesome. Any um, things that you have in 2021 that you're like really excited about and want people to get hyped about? I mean, honestly, I'm just really excited to be in Miami and help okay. build this community out here. Open these like photo, more photo labs okay. around the country so that can be like the standard accessible photo lab that you know you're going to get taken care of. Awesome. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. Like a lot of productions are going to be happening with this partnership. I think we're calling it Paperwork Studio, and uh, that'll kind of just be in a lot of places. So hopefully, you know, people will get familiar with it over the year. Yeah. Well, congratulations on all of your like success, even from now. Um, I can't. We can't wait to see where you go in 2021 and beyond. I honestly, I really enjoyed talking to you. You seem like likewise. So, so like put together. That's awesome. Um, Thanks. And to end it off, thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to me and uh, join sure. the 24-7 Drip community. And uh, for you guys at home, if you if there's anyone that you want us to talk to next time, go ahead and comment below. Follow us for any more content. And thank you so much, James. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.